Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and I got back from Action Figure Authority a bunch of items across two boxes. All of these items were sent off approximately about four months ago, and I've got some loose graded. I've got three mint on cards that I wanted to show you guys. So first, I wanted to show you the four figures that I sent in to be recased. So AFA does offer recasing if you've got older case styles, things like that. And I did just randomly pick four in uh, my collection to send in for recasing because I had a loose figure that I wanted to get graded that was ungraded. And I was like, well, if I'm going to send one in, I might as well send some in to be recased. So these are the four that I chose. And uh, the first two are Jawas. Here is a Jawa. This one is a purple stitch Jawa, graded AFA 85 with the Hong Kong country of origin. And that was just one I had in kind of an older case style that I thought would be worth uh, sending in to have the newer case style. So you can see very clearly there, those stitches. It's hard to tell. I should have pulled down my brown stitches. Let's see what this one is. This one is a light brown stitch that I'll show you next, but you can kind of compare the differences in the light and it may not come through very clearly, but uh, the color is a more vibrant violet for this purple stitch versus this one that's a light brown stitch. And it probably does not come out that noticeable in the camera, but in person, it really does pop relative to this one that I also sent in to be regraded, which was a light brown stitch Hong Kong COO. This one was a 90 grade. So I just figure, you know, anything I've gotten high grade with maybe an older case style that I bought, you know, many moons ago, that this one uh, would be a good one to do since it is a 90 grade. But you can see kind of more clearly on the arms there, that light brown stitch uh, versus the arms on the purple stitch. That's a little more noticeable maybe than the trim at the bottom of the feet, but it's a light brown stitch relative to the purple stitch. There is obviously also a dark brown stitch, many other stitch colors, black, rust, mixed stitches, think green stitch, things like that. Uh, this is one that I received as a gift from Patreon supporter and buddy of mine, Dominic R. He sent me an AFA 85 Hollow Cheeks Tuscan Raider, which is a completely ridiculous gift. It did have the clear view label up top, uh, with the AFA 85, and, uh, and just because of my OCD, I really only have one Darth Vader baggy. That's a Clipper mail-away baggy. That is the only one that I've got that has the Clearview label up top. Everything else has the label kind of on the inside of the of the label of the of the acrylic case. So, since I was sending in some others, I was like, okay, well, I'll, we'll go ahead and get this one recased. But this one is the Hollow Cheeks Tuscan Raider. I did get archival cases for all of these recasings. So hopefully that comes through there. Archival case, hollow cheeks. And what's that referring to? If you're new to vintage Star Wars, that just refers to the two cheeks there that uh, are hollowed out. And they came on later. I think it was 65 back, Return of the Jedi card backs, 65 Bs, I believe. That uh, was just kind of a weird factory variant for some of the later releases for the Tuscan Raider. And it's got the kind of the darker brown paint applications for the hands, as well as the bandolier and the face mask. And then the last one was a Darth Vader. This one had an older case style, and I looked at it, I was like, you know what, this is a pretty nice figure. So why don't we send this one in for recasing as well? And so you can see there's the raised bar COO, Darth Vader archival case, uncirculated 85 plus. So some crazy person had a blank raised bar COO Darth Vader. I'm assuming that this one was from the Clipper mail away in a baggie. Uh, so they probably sent in the seal, either the sealed baggie or they sent in the actual Clipper box with the Vader inside and had it loose graded for some crazy reason. So uh, if you have the Clipper box and you know the baggie for Darth Vader that came in that Clipper box, that's much more valuable than just a blank raised bar COO, even loose graded like this in high grade of an uncirculated 85. So don't do that. And they don't do uncirculated grading anymore where they'll open things up anyway. But uh, just interesting that that figure was a blank raised bar COO and uncirculated designation. I'm assuming that it was from that mail away. Um, so here is the last one I wanted to show you. This is a new edition. And I picked this one up from Rogue 5 Toys. Chris W. had this available 
for sale and it was ungraded. So I, I, I estimated it would get about an 80 grade. And this is the Lily Letty made in Mexico, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he's got a couple of telltale things about him that kind of gave it away that as soon as he sent me a picture of it, he didn't even have to tell me it was a Lily Letty. I knew immediately. The first one being the saber. If you, anytime you see one of those thicker sabers like this, uh, where it's got a thicker saber tip, it's most likely a Lily Letty. And that's the case for this one. He's also to have known to have kind of really kind of deep, darker paint apps to the eyes. It's kind of a dark gray color to the hair. There are, are obviously many different variants for the Lily Letty uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but this is the most common one. It's kind of the dark gray hair with very heavy mascara eyes. And then the feet also have little platforms, uh, much more... Uh, the, the, the feet, the heels and the front of the, of the feet are a little bit more pronounced and raised up versus a standard Hong Kong figure. So this is my first AFA graded, loose graded Obi-Wan. I've got a couple of UKG examples, but this one is loose graded archival case, Lily Letty, and it did come back with the 80. I think the main culprit for it was his hand. Um, you can kind of see that there. There's just a little bit of paint defects to that hand uh you know otherwise it was a pretty clean figure so i assumed it was going to get about an 80 grade just because of that hand unfortunately i think if that hand had had clean paint apps probably probably has a decent chance at an 80 plus or an 85 but i didn't see much else wrong with it and i think it was appropriately graded an 80 so those were the loose figures four recasings reholderings or whatever you want to call it and then one new loose graded figure the lily letty obi-wan uh and then i did pick up some mint on cards that i sent in to afa for grading and the first one you'll have to bear with me here a little bit of shaking of the camera i'm gonna expand out a little bit here there we go so this one is one i picked up as if you all remember i picked this one up in an auction overseas. I cannot remember the name of the auction house. It was kind of a random find on live auctioneers. And uh, the bidding process was kind of confusing because I think it was because I was going through live auctioneers instead of just the the auction house directly, uh, which I didn't know. I didn't know that they had the option to do that. I thought you had to do it through live auctioneers. So I bid on a number of items, but this is the only one I won. Uh, there was a lot of scalpers that were bidding and they were buying stuff and then reselling them on Facebook. So a lot of those items went for below fair market value. This one, I would argue, probably went at far fair market value or above, mainly because I had to, you know, it was in the UK. I had to ship from the UK and the conversion was at the time was not great for dollars to British pounds. So all of those factors kind of combine to what I, I consider I paid probably fair market value or slightly above at the time. But this is a Return of the Jedi 45 back C Dengar. And it's a tough one to find with this particular blister, especially clear. I've seen a couple of examples on Facebook for sale. It's funny, as soon as you buy something, you see the exact same item come up for sale on Facebook uh, literally it was within a couple of weeks, but both of them were not nearly as nice as this one. One of them had a yellow blister and it sold for about the same price that I paid for this one. And then Chris W actually had another one, but it had a crease going all the way through the top of the card. That one ended up going for really cheap, but this is the first clear blister, double stem blister that I, that I found, uh, for, for this particular character, Dengar. And uh, you can see there, it's got the Palatoy double stem blister, kind of a, just a variation for some of the blister types that the Palatoy factory used. And uh, just one of those tough ones to find. And I knew it wasn't perfect when I was bidding on it, but I wanted it because it, it was a nice addition for my Dengar collection. And this one, uh, you know, had some wear around the hang tab, which was the main culprit. It also did have a ding on the top of the blister, but so this is the less exciting of the two Dengars I got. The second one I got is one of one. It's the highest graded example now on AFA's population report. So stick around and I'll show you that one in a second. But this one I, I did, for all of these items, I did get the upgraded archival case. 
45C Palatoy Dengar, 75, 75, 85. And I think those scores are appropriate, just given the edge wear to the card, edge wear on the left-hand side, and then obviously some wear around the hang tab. Here's the back of the card for those that you have not seen this. But uh, this has got the free nine num offer uh, for the address in the UK, UK residents only. But uh, very nice example. And, you know, I'm sure that if you look at the list of 45 C's, which it's a pretty it's a pretty big list of of card backs that were toy Tonys uh, that were on 45 C's. Luckily, Dengar is not on that list. So this list uh, shows you the Palatoy 45 back C's and it lists every character that are known to be toy Tonys. And it also lists in parentheses the estimated number of Toy Tony. So 21B had 301 of them. Adat Commander had 27 of them. Boba Fett obviously is a big Toy Tony example. 482 of those. Death Star Droid, unfortunately, is another one. Uh, I'd love to have that one. And you can see all the other characters there. This is from, I know you guys are going to ask me, but this is an older guide, second edition. Echo Base Vintage Trading. This is a Facebook group. You can reach out to Wayne Totty, T-O-T-T-Y, for the updated example of this book. They put it out every year, and you just pay a donation, and uh, it helps support their charity of choice that year. So I just bought it for this particular page, Toy Tony Cardback Reference Guide. And it lists all the different cardbacks. And it shows an example of one, and then the estimated Toy Tonys per character per cardback. To me, it was worth the 10 or 15 bucks that I paid for it just for this one page to have all handy. There, you know, you can find it online as well. Mr. Palatoy's uh, cardback guide online has those, but it's just more, it's just easier to have a, a physical copy available. And I wanted, for all of the mint on cards I just got back from AFA, I did want to tell you the population reports. That's kind of an interesting one. Uh, the Palatoy Dengar, this one, this 45C, this is one of four graded 75. And there's only five graded higher on the population report. So fairly rare, fairly rare to have one of four with only five graded higher. That's a pretty good number. And, you know, you would expect that for any foreign card back. More on that in a second, because I, I was shocked when I found out that the next one uh, was a one of one. Uh, the, the highest graded on the population report. But uh, this one is one of four, five graded higher. And to keep... With the Dengar theme, here is that one of one. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw it. But this is a Kenner Canada 41 back C Dengar. And it got the 80 grade. It's an AFA 80 clear blister. It is a punched example. No price sticker. Here are the subgrades on it. 80, 80, 75, which is interesting. But the 75 was because it's got some plastic degradation going on on Dengar's right arm. So I think it's appropriately a 75 grade for the figure, but it, they were they took mercy and they did give me the 80, which I think it deserves. Uh, the blister is in great shape. It had just some very very minor dings to it. Uh, the card back was also in immaculate shape. Shout out to Mike Freeman. He runs Fourth Moon Toys. You can find him on Instagram. Fourth Moon Toys. He's a Canadian seller. He had this. In the deal or no deal group on Facebook, I believe. I bought it several months ago, so I don't remember. And uh, he sold this to me. And you can see there, it's got the La Guerre des Atois, Le Pire de la Contre-Attaque. But this is a really nice Canadian Dengar. He had it for sale, and I was like, you know what, let's roll the dice on it and see what it gets. It did get the 80, and it is one of one. It is the highest graded and the only one graded 80 grade. There's none higher than that. And uh, I was shocked when I found that out when I looked at the population report by typing in the certification number uh, onto AFA's website. So uh, pretty cool to have the highest graded example of the 41 back C Dengar uh, in the world. Uh, pretty, pretty cool thing to, to have. But uh, obviously no one probably really cares except for me, but I just thought that was interesting. The last one was one I picked up from Hakes. This is a 48 back C 21B medical droid. It's got two Kmart price stickers in the upper right-hand corner. It is a punched example. I picked this up uh, ungraded from Hakes. I thought it had a good chance at a high grade, and I was right. Uh, it came back from AFA with a 80-plus 
80 for the card score and then 85s for the blister and the figure score. Archival case there as well. Beautiful crystal clear blister. I love the free Revenge of the Jedi offer along with uh, the color of that particular figure. It just really pops nicely. And here's the back of the card. Obviously, the 48 back B had a sticker advertising the free Admiral Akbar special mail away offer. And then the 48 C's went to printed card backs along with printed offers on the cards. So this one got the 80 plus and I did look up the population report on this. This is the only 80 plus grade on the population report, but there are nine higher. So there's nine higher than this, but this is the only 80 plus on the population report. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm assuming that there are AFA 85s and 85 pluses. I don't think there were any 90s if memory serves, but I could be wrong. I forgot to, to note that. But there are nine higher than this, but it, this one is the only 80 plus on the population report now. So very nice batch of items that just came back from AFA. They did a great job. Right now they're adver uh, advertising a 45 day turnaround time for mint on card action figures. These took about two and a half, three months ish. And then the loose figures took about four months. So I hope you enjoyed this look at my recent pickups. Thank you as always for watching and I'll be back soon.